Welcome to Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Discover 2016 London. I'm Jennifer Rogers. For many organizations, managing and integrating existing IT services with Microsoft Azure's public cloud can be complex and time consuming. If you are finding it difficult to migrate workloads to the public cloud and you don't understand why your public cloud bill is increasing every month, my next guest is for you. Jay Keyes with HPE's Workload and Cloud Practice is here to help you position Azure in your hybrid cloud strategy. Welcome. Thanks very much, Jen. So why is public cloud, and in particular Microsoft Azure, of importance to executives in the C-suite? Well, CXOs these days have got to um, deal with the complex mix of hybrid IT services, whether that's traditional, private cloud, virtual private cloud, or even now public cloud. And of course, Microsoft Azure is one of the primary uh, public clouds available today in the industry. Um, when CXOs have to integrate all of these different technologies, these different services from traditional all the way through to public, it becomes a complex challenge. Um, and public cloud adds some additional complexities uh, that they didn't necessarily have to deal with before in, in the way that public cloud um, you know, allows them to function. Um, many organizations want to be able to use public cloud to uh, launch new services, to explore new opportunities, uh, to bring in innovation within their organizations, or even to extend into new markets. Um, because of the speed, the flexibility, and the ease of, of use. Um, but being able to manage public cloud within the landscape of their existing IT uh, environments can be, a, you know, can be awkward, so. So, you know, given all those challenges, what are the additional benefits or really advantages of uh, ES's managed services for Microsoft Azure? What do they provide to so, enterprises? Yeah, so, so the benefits of uh, both consuming a public cloud from Microsoft Azure, but then also having wrapper services, managed services from enterprise services for Microsoft Azure uh, wrapped around that, give the CXO uh, audience, if you like, the visibility uh, and the transparency of what they're consuming, what their business units, who, who now are just a click away on a portal from, okay, we need to provision additional services, or from their developers being able to spin up virtual machines uh, very, very quickly, um, understanding what's being consumed um, and the, the rate of services that are being released by the public cloud providers and Microsoft especially, uh, means that those developers can turn on um, services very rapidly uh, and they don't understand what's you know what's going on from a billing perspective until the finance department says at the end of the month oh dear you know our public cloud consumption uh, and the cost is not where we expect it to, to be we, it's not where we forecasted and that's because it's very easy to turn these additional services on uh, so that's part of the benefit of having the additional sort of wrapper services from enterprise services on top of Microsoft Azure. So we've heard so much here in London uh, about the hybrid transformation and that really being the key to success in the digital economy. So uh, with that in mind, how does Microsoft's Azure and ES services fit really into this hybrid equation that we've been talking about? Yeah. So, from a perspective of migrating or positioning or even developing new applications on Microsoft Azure, um, there's no difference from a traditional environment in, this, in the respect of, um, you know, developers still need access to develop and test. Um, you still need to be able to release to production uh, and make sure that all of your security concerns are, are, are dealt with. Um, and that you understand which workloads are the best ones to migrate to the public cloud. So jointly between Microsoft and Enterprise Services, um, we have a great breadth of capability that helps our clients understand, assess those workloads, and then take the risk out of moving those workloads to the public cloud, but then giving them that transparency of billing and reporting and making sure that everything is patched and monitored and secured um, as they would expect in a traditional or a private cloud environment. Is there anything that you think our viewers would be surprised to hear at all um, about the cloud platform initiative partnership between Microsoft and enterprise services? Anything out there that would uh, get them surprised and also uh, why they should care about it? Yeah, so, so um, you know, enterprise services and Microsoft have got a very long heritage, a very long relationship. It's 30 plus years. Um, you know, we, we are one of the 
early uh, systems integrators from an enterprise services perspective that uh, worked with Microsoft and we continue to work with Microsoft very, very closely. Um, so when we're positioning Microsoft Azure services and the managed services, we jointly go into clients um, to help them design and optimize the benefits that they can achieve from public cloud. Uh, and they get the support that they need both from a managed service provider who partners incredibly closely with Microsoft so that we can bring innovative services to those clients who are then quite often using them in front of their own customers. Uh, and they have that security and knowledge that they have both a, you know, a, a very um, heritage rich services organization that work with Microsoft as a, a, you know, a core partner. A long relationship indeed. Very. Uh, Jake Keyes, thank you so much for stopping by the uh, Digital Executive Studio at Hewlett Packard Enterprise Discover 2016 London. I'm Jennifer Rogers, thanks for watching.